Hey guys, it's Chris here, Manifest. I'm hanging out with my good friend, Rick Barker, former manager of Taylor Swift, who has helped me out a ton in my own music career. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Glad you got to Nashville. Dude, it's good to be here. So you're here yeah. writing, producing some tracks, yep. and hanging out. Yeah, man. And scumming have, it with the guys like me. You know, I'm not ready to move here yet because, like I said, there's no ocean. But uh, And I know, said there's no ocean in Canada either. There's not, but uh, there's a lot of good people. And uh, what, what do you think about this? I wasn't even going to ask you this. How important do you think it is that people need to be here to be successful? I think when you get to a point, I don't know if you need to be here to be successful, but you need to be here to better yourself. You need to be where the action's at. Let's just say that. It's like, I don't think you need to be here to start. But you definitely, once you get, if you're all into hip hop, you better get to Atlanta as soon as possible. Yeah. You know, Toronto, yeah. you know, uh, Nashville. We're more than just country now. Yeah. But you got to be where the creatives are. You got to be where there are people that can challenge you and inspire yeah. you. There's a bunch of people I wanted to write with this week, and some of them were gone. Um, some of them just weren't available. And like, I would probably be writing. 10 times more and working with more people if you I would. was here because Zoom is great, but like, you know, even our, this interview is so much better that sure. we get to be here and be in the heat or someone's, someone has a date that opens up and it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm around it. Well, like, but also too, is that you've developed a relationship with enough people where you can make trips. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would encourage people to do too, is start mm -hmm. making a couple trips, go hang out at the writer's rounds, go yeah. network, meet some friends, reach out to people on Instagram. Send them a voice message. Tell them you like their music and you're coming to town and would they be yeah. interested in writing. There's so many different things we can do before, but if you ultimately want to be in that part of the industry, you have to go where the industry yeah. is. It's the same yeah. way with cars. If you're going to build cars, you're going to Detroit. Yep. You know, yep. if you're going to go fish for crab, you're moving to Alaska. Yeah. You know, and, how did, and how did we meet? Um, this is our nine year anniversary, by the wow. way, just so you know. Nine wow, years. did you get um, me anything? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <this laughs> I'll interview. get you to autograph my book. Yeah. Um, but uh, we met at a conference. Your book. Right? Autograph your book, oh, okay, not my book, but right, my I'll book of yours. Okay, I'll autograph it. Okay. But we met at a conference because you were willing to go spend money and go somewhere. Yep. I was willing to go, and we've developed this relationship. And you've introduced me to amazing people, and I've connected with you, and it's sure. just been this awesome thing because we went somewhere. Well, we went where the people were. That's right. And we didn't wait for those people to find us. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I love listening to audiobooks. I love, you know, I like reading chapters in books. I very seldom read full books, but there's nothing better than being in the same room. There's yeah. no, they, they call it, our buddy Myron Golan talks about it a lot, proximity. Yeah. You know, when you're in proximity, I had a buddy of mine, he was, uh, he was a practice player in the NFL and he's like, and he played guitar and all his buddies told me he sounded like Jack Johnson. Yeah. Cause I think that's probably the only acoustic guitar player everybody knew at the time. They're like, dude, yeah. you like Jack Johnson. You need to have a record deal. You need your songs on the radio, which is what you, you watching this might've heard that. So he's like, I'm going to move to Nashville. I said, well, why don't you come stay with me for a week first? Mm -hmm. So I took him downtown and I mean, he, we would walk in and, and, and if you've never been to Nashville there, they have clubs that's like on three levels and on every level, there's a different band. And on every floor, Dude, those people the can airport sing. The airport now, there's multiple people playing and, at every bar. You know, the, air, the airport's <laughs> amazing now, actually. Well, it is. It's better. It, yeah, it's much better. But what happens is, is he would go, oh my God, that guy's so good. I'm like, yeah, he had a record deal and lost. He's like, what? And this guy over here, yeah, he can't get a deal. He's tried, no one. And he's like, Dude they're better than I am. What, what, how am I going to fit in here? And I said, yeah. well, you don't come to Nashville to stand out. You come here to network and challenge yourself to get yeah. better. And he understood yeah. that concept of it, yeah. but that's good. You really got to just make sure you're in the right head space. Make sure that mentally you're in, uh, you can handle no's. Yeah. Cause a lot yeah. of people can't. Yeah. And don't, and like, I don't even, I used to hate coming here back in the day because it felt like everybody was walking over each other. And it was, and I used to come here because I wanted to get signed because I wanted someone to pick me. Yeah. And, and now I've realized that like, pick yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, we're recording this. We've built our own platforms. I built my own platform. And, you know, you don't wait for the label to start and build with your own audience. Like you said with the guy, like, don't try to be better than them or compete with them. Compete with yourself and just do your do your own thing. Well, you know? and we're also in a different time. Ten years ago, yeah, collaboration wasn't happening. You know, yeah. look at a pop song now. There's eight writers on yeah. it. You know, it's yeah. it's like we're in a collaborative world. Uh, 
people just want to collaborate with folks that are humble, mm -hmm. somebody that brings something to the table, someone mm -hmm. who's not needy. Yeah. You know, if someone just comes in and feels like I need you to be successful, I don't want to hang around with that yeah. person. And most people that I know don't want to hang around yeah. with that person. Yeah, that needy vibe is, is no good. Well, and I also tell people, too, is if you feel you need something in order to be successful, yeah. you're not the right person yeah. for it. Yeah. Whether it be a record deal, a publishing deal, a manager, whatever the case yeah. may be. There's this featured artist I've been getting on all my songs that I wanted to talk to you about. And it's this, this new artist. They're so sick, dude. Okay. They're called, he's called... He or she is called Chat GPT. They're binary. That's a, <laughs> but no, I want to talk to you about this Chat GPT because you might get canceled because you may have even said that wrong. You know what I mean? A computer might be did you offended. Like, did you like that? Yeah, that's one more. A computer that's a good segue. might be offended. Um, I've been using it for a couple, well, a few weeks now, but I've been using it every day in my songwriting. I want to talk to you about it because you just did an awesome uh, talk about it. I know you've been sharing with your students about it. Well, to me, it's just another tool. Yeah. You know, and, and people have gotten all up in arms about it. And usually the people who get up in arms about it are the people who suck. Yeah. You know what Let's I mean? Let's tell people what it is. Let's okay, tell people so what it is first. What AI is stands thing? for artificial intelligence. Chat GPT is an open-ended platform where you can go on and you can ask it to help you with things, you know, uh, I use it a lot for uh, writing blogs in the golf space. Yeah. So I do a lot of work in the golf space as well. And I'll say, hey, write me an email listing out the five things I should do in the winter to shoot lower scores. And it'll say, you know, have better cleats and do this and do that. Yeah. So it's, you can you use it for a lot of different ideas. things. Yeah. But you have to feed it. Yes. And you just don't go on there and stuff magically appears. Yeah. You have to give it information. So AI has been happening for a while on the music side, the production side. Uh, you know, some people would say a drum machine yeah. is AI, but it's not. You're still physically having to make yeah. those sounds. You yeah. know, you're physically have, you know, does it do, can you have 47 different drum samples that would be hard as heck to play? Yes, and, but you still physically have to do it. So the same stands with AI. So people started going, well, people are writing songs and it's not even their words, Yeah, you know? And I'm like, how often have I gone to the drugstore, picked up a Valentine's day card that I did not write, yeah. but it said what I wish that I could say, yeah. gave it to my wife, yep. maybe got a little action that night, you know, yeah. got a yeah. hug, got to, did yeah. she look at me and go, well, crap, you didn't write that. Yeah. She yeah. said, oh my God, thank you so much for yeah. thinking about me. Yeah. Thank you so much for thinking that. Yeah you know, and finding the right words to, mm -hmm. to be able to say it. Mm -hmm. So we've been teaching people, you know, how to just write better songs. Yeah. It's no different than a rhyming dictionary. Yeah. It's no different than, you know, even watching a movie. I use it for a rhyming dictionary because I used to use rhyme brain all the time. Yeah. So sometimes I'll and say, master writer, give me, give me words that rhyme with this. And sometimes if it's a, a two letter word or two syllable, I'll sure. say, give me two words that rhyme. So it's like, you know, uh, I don't know, um, you know, deep end, you know, so give me two words that rhyme with deep end and they'll start giving me, well, sink in or whatever. And it'll sure. start giving me, and it gives me ideas and whether I use them or not, sometimes it's it'll just trigger something, trigger in something, you. something right? right? So like, exactly. That's exactly it. it. It's, I was listening and, uh, to a presentation. There's some of the biggest writers that have written some of the biggest hits. They're going in and they're saying, give me five different analogies mm. for this cliche something that yeah. we've heard over and over it's like we don't want to hear the same thing over and over yeah. again but we know what we want to say yeah. so they'll go in and they'll ask it for things like that uh like I, that bruno mars thing like i'd take a grenade for you like yeah. it's basically saying like i would die for you right yes. so how do i say what well, give me five different ways to say i would die for you oh i love that it's right great, yeah like um and and, it, and or, or sometimes what i'll say is i'll say like if there's a line i have like uh you know i love you like no tomorrow. Uh, write this, write I love you like tomorrow, more metaphoric, I'll sure. sometimes say. So it'll spit me some metaphors. And sometimes it'll just give me one line and I'll say, I like that. Give me more. Right. And it literally goes, and well, it gives see, me more. It's no different than if you were with a co-writer and you said, let's take this line, but let's do it better. Let's say it better. What's well, me just, saying, Rick, I, I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm writing this letter to my wife, dude. Right. I, I want right. to say this. Right. And, and, and you're like, yeah, what do I say? And I can either rely on you. And you're not going to go say, 
Rick said to tell you, you know. <laughs> yeah, but like, like I can rely on a friend or a machine right. that is scouring the internet. And the cool part about that is the more you interact with it, the more it learns your tonality, mm. your voice, your everything. So I was at the CD Baby Music Conference and I was with a group and I, I said, let's write a song, you know? And I said, so we're going to write a hip hop song. I said, what's the song about? And his, his words were the journey. I'm like, what journey? And they didn't think, and then he goes from like Washington DC to North Carolina. I said, pretty specific to you, right? Yeah. What happened during that journey? Was there struggle? Was there yeah. chaos? What, and then all of a sudden the light bulb went in. So we were just feeding that yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll make sure that in the description below this, I'll give them a link. They can go check that when we yeah, wrote yeah, that yeah, song yeah. out. It's very, very good. But what what I was trying to show them was, look, I'm not going to all of a sudden go write a record on AI and claim to be a songwriter because I'm yeah. not a songwriter. Okay, yeah. I use it for other things. I use it to help artists write bios and EPKs mm -hmm. and press releases because you can go use ChatGPT, which is free, or mm -hmm. you can go pay five hundred dollars on that's on the low end to get someone to write you a bio. Yeah. When you were with the label, it's yeah. like I remember they came to yeah. me and they said, "Hey, we hired this bio writer for you." I said, "Really?" They said, "Yeah, they're only five hundred dollars." I'm like, "Dude, five hundred bucks." Yeah, dude, that's a great <laughs> example of what someone like your about section, the back of your book, yes, or um, you know, song titles. Give me some song titles. Yes, but th the thing, that, as much as I love it, right? Like, it's not going to write the song for you. But success loves speed, right? Yes. And but like, like I saw the CD Baby thing, and you're rapping it or whatever, and, and whatever, and you did you did an all right job. Uh, you know, not bad, no not manifest. Bad. I'm no manifest. Yeah, you know. You know. know. Um, but uh, the idea is, is like, it's not going to give you the melodies. Obviously, there are other AI tools for that. But like, you still have to put your own thing on it, let alone the production, let alone the mix. Like, we're really just trying to get to the goal quicker. Well, here's what people right? are saying. You know, AI is going to replace songwriters. No. AI will, somebody has to feed it. Mm -hmm. So the person that learns how to give it the best prompts mm -hmm. is who's going to replace you. Yeah. Not the computer. There's yeah. still a person that has to drive this. Also, yeah. too, is that you that's building the relationship with the with the consumer. Mm -hmm. AI can't build a relationship for you. No. But if you can write something that's emotional, it's like I was I was laughing and I say this in the presentation. I said, when I hear a song that touches me, I don't think about how much the artist weighs who wrote it. Mm -hmm. I don't think about what gender they are. I don't mm -hmm. think about what their economic background is. I don't care how old they are. I just know that they emotionally got a hold of me. Mm -hmm. Stop overthinking it. Mm. Stop overthinking it. And that's the thing. It's like our job is to connect with you. You know, mm -hmm. Chris and I are trying to connect with you in a way that says, hey, these guys, I kind of dig what they're doing. Let me see more of what they have going yeah. on. Yeah. I just don't come up and do a video and go, hey, I worked with Taylor Swift and American Idol and I have a course. It's $500. You want to buy it? Yeah. Yeah, you build a, you build it, a it doesn't matter it because it, yeah. it doesn't relate to you yet mm -hmm. so your struggle does not relate to the consumer until mm -hmm. you make it relate to the consumer mm -hmm. and then they're like because we want to hang out with like-minded mm -hmm. people so bottom line don't be afraid of technology yeah there's people right now that are still fighting the internet yeah well, well you won. know what makes me think it of won. Me? <laughs> it makes me think of how people are scared of chat gpt because they don't know how to use it the same reason. And let us know below this if you are not on TikTok yet, because you don't know how to use it for you, right? Yeah, or it, or any social, like, like and you just because it's like, you're not like, what? how do I put my voice on there? And you don't have to be crazy dancing videos, whatever, but you can And honestly, use it. you don't have to be there. No. It's only the biggest discovery platform for music right now, but you don't have to be there, you know? And you don't have to use chat GPT. Uh, maybe your songs have been giving you all the success you've wanted and, you know, they're brilliant. And you know. no, the reality is these are places that you can either accept or right. you can push back. Yeah. But it's up to you. You do not it's have free. to do anything. It's free. Both yeah. of these tools are free. Well, I right? mean, yeah, like, they are. And, you know, but and that's sometimes why people. They don't put a value they on it. Yeah, they, they discredit, discredit it. Yeah. Well, check this out. Well, Rick. it's too crowded. It's yeah. free. Everyone's yeah. there. It's too crowded. 
I think I spent, yeah. I'm, I'm spending about 150 a day on Instagram and Facebook ads for my music right now, right? Okay. I'm going to a free plus shipping, so I'm getting direct sales. I don't have the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure it cost me, and, I, and I'll have to do a video later for this, but for 30 to 40,000 impressions, sure. it was costing me about 150 Canadians. So that's about 120 American. Okay. Because, um, right? But so that so that's sort of about, let's just say it's 40,000 impressions. Sure. That's about right. I got on my videos on Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, one reel got me like five or 6,000 reach for free. So like if you divide that by whatever, that's like, you know, almost like a, I'd have to pay 40 bucks for that or 30 bucks. Right. And so it's just like, you know, if I take the time to create and think and post, I can reach thousands of people well, or I can, I can pay. You and, know what I well, mean? and I would rather pay because I know that I chose who was going to see it, the type that's of true. person I wanted I to see I can't control it. that. I can't, and that's what I can't, that's why people will come to me and they'll say, Rick, why aren't you more active on TikTok? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll be 100% honest with you why. It's because every time I did something on TikTok, I wasn't finding the artist that wanted to be Taylor Swift. Yeah. It was all her fans that thought I was there in yeah. to meet Taylor Swift. Right. So they would bombard my comments and it wasn't fun. So what did I do? I'm very active with TikTok ads. Right. Why? Because I can say I'm looking for musicians yeah. between this age that does this and this is who I like to have. So I yeah. would much rather roll the dice and put a little money behind it yeah, it's knowing both. I'm going to be able to target. And now I've just started randomly posting things as well. But see, it's different for me. TikTok is not the number one discovery platform for people teaching the music business. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. Are, so that's where yeah. I'm active. Yeah. But if I was an artist, TikTok is the best for discovery. Instagram is the best for engagement. YouTube is still an intent based platform. People go there looking for something. So if you can sing a cool cover song in your own unique style that we know people are searching for, which then leads them to your music, mm -hmm. then jump all over YouTube. But they're all different. And you got to understand what the differences. Yeah. Who do, who do you think is doing social media well as a, an artist who comes to mind that you feel like, you know what, they're, 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 they're doing it. They're killing it. They get it. It's, a, it's in a lot of different ways. Uh, Abel Hart, A-B-L-E-H-E-A-R-T yeah. -E -E is doing it really well. He, he figured out how to take the hooks of his songs mm. and write them for TikTok, mm. which translated over to his Instagram, yeah. which translated over into hundreds of thousands of monthly listeners. Yeah. And Spotify, Jelly Roll does a really good job with it. He he kind of came up through that route. You know, he's he goes a little bit different at it because he'll use it as a way to communicate quickly with his audience. He's like, okay, y'all, here's the thing. I'm doing this, I need this, I need this, and boom, they just they just go. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like there was a, a stat. So at, a, at one time I had interviewed his old manager, they had like 1.6 million monthly listeners mm -hmm. and they were averaging six plays a day per monthly listener. So what he did is he went on Instagram and they ran ads and they said, listen, I know a lot of you can't afford our t-shirts or to come and you're really looking for ways to help support the band. And I appreciate that. If you could do me a favor, if you could just play my record once a day, I'd appreciate it. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. And he was making three hundred thousand dollars as an independent artist a month off of streaming royalties. I'm going to do that tonight <laughs> again, and, and just keep laughing. play my record. Yeah, hey, I appreciate once. it, guys. If you could just play my record, um, yeah, you know, it's like you love my music. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's just yeah. put it on in the background. Yeah. Go wash the house, yeah. work out to it. Do Fans whatever. Fans can't take an offer you don't make. Exactly, and they won't figure it out themselves. Yeah, they're just going to go whatever. I will say, Rick, on the way here, on one of my ads for my music. Someone said, because I was doing a free plus shipping for my CD and not everybody has CDs anymore, but I still sell hundreds of them. But you know what? Some people don't, but it was so cool. This person says, I don't have a CD player in my car, but I went to iTunes and I bought this song and a bunch of other ones. And that I looked at on the way here and I just like, like I sold hundreds of thousands of records, but like just seeing that, like, sure. just like, it made me feel so warm. Do you know inside. Taylor Swift sells 2 million CDs every time she releases a physical CD to people with no CD players? They're, Why is they're, that? Rick? They're investing in her. They know that she put the time into the lyrics, the hidden messages, the cookies. Those are all things yep. that we set up years ago. Yep. You know, but 
they she she takes pride in it. Mm-hmm. She, they know there's something in there, and the only way they can know what's in there is to physically yeah. hold it. Yeah. She just released a, a, a record at one of her era shows, and people were lining up nine hours before the gates opened to be the first in line to go to the merch table to buy a CD. It was like a limited edition. It thing? was only going to be able to be sold oh there before it hit the stores. So smart, yeah. We've been doing more limited edition. And when you got 70,000 people and they all want to oh be the gosh. first 70,000. Can you imagine selling 70,000 CDs in one night physical? That would be beautiful. Woo! Dude. The rich keep getting Dude. richer. Rick, so, so inspired. <laughs> Dude, it's it's amazing. So to, to kind of cap this off, what do you think um, artists can do to, like, what, what's working and what advice do you have? For people, what, what should artists be doing to get heard, to get known more? What's what's your advice these days? Treat it, treat it like a business. Yeah. And ask yourself this. So all of you are your first record company. You are your first record company. You're your first publisher, manager. As the president of this record company, would you be fired or promoted based on what you did today to market your only artist on the roster, which is you? Stop being cheap. You see what I'm saying? Is it's like, think about, did you do everything you could to get your artist's music heard today? Did you do everything that you could to get them in front of the right people? Or did you sit around waiting for the phone to ring, a special magic email to come in or something? So you can't expect business results when you treat something like a hobby. And I think more artists need to come to the realization that this is just a hobby and there is nothing wrong with doing music because you love music. That's why most people got into it in the first place. But if you want to take it to another level, you have to start treating it like a business. No successful business opens up and just randomly tries to figure this stuff out on their own. They hire consultants. They bring in experts. They hire a general manager who's had experience running a restaurant. They may be the owner with the money and love Italian food, and say, I want to have an Italian restaurant, but they're going to bring in a chef that's had success. Why do you keep fighting getting help from people like us? You know, that's the thing that I never really understood. It's like, wait a minute, somebody who already has the answers to the question, somebody who already has done what it is that you're trying to do, someone who's already succeeded and failed, so they know what you should and should not spend your time, energy, and money on. Why are you resisting that yeah. it's never and people, some people just want like imagine i'm trying to get from here right yeah. on this table to here yep yeah. but instead of just going straight across i'm just going to go around and around <laughs> and around you know what i mean yeah. and it's just like why not cut the time to get but if quicker? it were easy everyone would be doing it yeah. most most of us in life as humans unfortunately have unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. How come I expect to lose the Mm -hmm. weight faster than how it went on? Mm -hmm. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, why do I think I'm the exception to the rule? Mm -hmm. I'm not, you Mm -hmm. know, I've struggled with things, but I go get experts in those areas to kind of help. But as human beings, we've all done it. We, we look for the easier, softer way. And people come to me and they're like, you know, I get this a lot with parents. They're like, yeah, but think my kid's ready for a record deal. I said, okay, let, <laughs> let, I said, let me use this analogy. If, if the NBA the, is the top of the heap for people that play basketball, there's only 32 teams mm-hmm. and they only have like 12 people on this roster. So what's that? 3000 people yeah. in the world yeah. that are getting a chance. Yeah. So there's other leagues, other places for them to go play. So when you come in and say, I think I'm ready for a record deal, what you have to ask yourself, are you the best choice of all the artists in the world in that genre right now? Do you bring mm-hmm. the most value mm-hmm. to that record company? Yeah. The answer is probably no. Why not? Because what they want now is the record companies are not equipped to start businesses. Mm-hmm. They are looking to acquire small businesses and they're, that are and they're already trying, working. They're, try, they're, they're trying to come along people that are already running. Absolutely. So they can run with you and then just launch you. And well, because they know what they're what they're good at. They're good yeah. at blowing up stuff that's working. Something that's already working. No, yeah. They're not in a position to build an audience for you. It's like they want you from zero to 70. They can take you from 70 yeah. 
beyond. And you don't want to sign no. when you're at, with between zero and like you need momentum. Where you're you're like, an employee at yeah. that point. That's when I signed at, at the, almost at the very beginning. We had some good music, we had some stuff, but I had no touring history be better. I had no sales history. Well, today, no email list. You would have well, had no demand for yeah. them to put you out. Yeah. They would have said, hey, there's this TikTok kid. Hey, here's this person that's got a buzz. Here's yeah. a go create a buzz. Yeah. yeah. Go create a buzz. But <clears throat> for me, it's all about realistic expectations. Are you doing everything in your power? to give you the best chance to succeed first. Mm -hmm. If you're not, then let's talk about that. You know, are you doing everything in your power? I asked an artist one day, I said, how many of you would love to have a radio station play your songs five times a day? Every single person in the room raised their hand. I said, great. How many of you posted your song on your Instagram stories today, considering everyone's radio station is now their phone yeah. and gave them a chance to play it? Yeah. Oh, so you're mad that the radio guy won't play you, but you don't even play yeah. yourself. Or how many radio stations have you emailed or followed up with? Or have you even made a list of the radio stations that you want to get on? And like, started trying to build relationships with them because they yeah. already have relationships with the labels. That's why you're probably not getting on. Yeah. Did you go hire a promoter who has a relationship with the radio station? Yeah. You know, it's like... Yeah. And I think it's setting goals. Like we could talk about all kinds of different things, right? Like whether it's you want to grow on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Choose one and yeah. really focus on that. Figure that out and, and become pro, become excellent yeah. at that as opposed to trying to, you know, do everything. Well, I tell people, I say, I am present everywhere. I am active in one place. I need to be present at discovery. So if someone hears this video and they're a Facebook person, they're going to go look for me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I can't guide them where I want to. I can give yeah. them links, but they're going to go, yeah. I call it, to their weapon of choice. Yeah. So I better be present and I better provide some value on Facebook. Yeah. If they're a TikTok person, they'll go to TikTok. They're going to find me. Yeah. If they go to Instagram, that's where I'm active. They're really going to find me there. So I'm like, I'm present at the discovery phase. I'm active. But what I'll do is I'll use my Facebook and TikTok to say, hey, Thanks so much for checking me out here on Facebook. But if you yeah. really want to engage, here's the link. Come hit Listen, me up yeah, yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. Send me a message. Yeah. I'll DM you back. And we'll you, get going and you do there. really respond to you. Uh, you've always. I do it by awesome voice because I'm bad at texting and yeah. it takes too long. I'd rather talk. So where can people connect with you, man? At Rick Barker Music on Instagram. Okay. That would be the best. Or you can go to uh, rickbarker.com. And on my website, I have a whole chat GPT presentation that I did uh, where I really dive deep into that. And uh, just, you know, give me your name and your email and I'll send that off to you. Uh, and now you'll be on my list. And now I will try to earn the right at some point down yeah. the road to be able to say, hey, Rick, I dug that. I want to learn yeah. more about what it is that you offer. I'm not here to I, I tell people I'm not here to sell you something. I'm here to make the offer for the person that needs the tools that yeah. I provide. And I, I appreciate how authentic and really you've been over the years, dude. You just you just been a real good friend and just been not just to me, um, but just just to the other artists out there, like you really care, you know, you're one of the people that actually want to see people well, win and you, and you tell the truth, whether <laughs> people want to hear it or not. But here's the thing. What type of person would you rather deal with? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I said something to someone one time. So I created a business model that works for me. Mm -hmm. I never talk about somebody else's business model. If somebody wants to sell $10,000 coaching, right. by God, sell $10,000 coaching. Yeah. I just wanted to be able to help as many people as I possibly could. Does it make me that I'm better or they're better or whatever? I mm -hmm. just kind of created my own business model. So I explained to people, I said, listen, I said, I need to be able to provide for my family because yeah. everyone wanted me to manage. Yeah. There was it, Rick, would you manage me? Would you manage oh. me? And I said, let me, let me explain something. I can only physically manage maybe three. Yeah. That means three people in the world. Yeah get direct access to learn from me and my help and my support on their projects. I didn't feel good with that. Yeah. One, because okay. I had to cross my fingers mm -hmm. and hope that they were a priority at the label. They got yeah. on all the right tours. Yeah. They consistently got yeah. releases. And it was a lot of pressure to put on that artist to say, my family doesn't eat. Unless, unless, unless you you're making money. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I started seeing just you a whole bunch of weird stuff. Because you would only get 15, 20%, right? Correct. That's what a lot of artists don't Correct. understand. Like, you know. I would only make money when the artist was making money. And at the beginning stages of an artist's career, there is no money being made. That's why my book's called The $150,000 Music Degree is yeah. because 
Taylor's family paid me $150,000 a year to be her manager. And I wish right. everyone, because they wanted me to be able to focus on her. Right. So what I chose to do was, how can I help as many people possible? Well, one, I needed to learn how to teach on video. That's where we met. Mm -hmm. I went to Experts Academy. He went to Experts Academy. Mm -hmm. We said, we've got all this information. How do we become the experts in our, our field? And that's what I wanted to be able to bring. I bring and come from a worked at the label, managed artist, worked for American Idol mm -hmm. place. If I'm going to ask, if someone's going to come to me and say, hey, Rick, as an artist, what would you suggest? Then I'm going to go to Chris because Chris is going to give me the same perspective, but from an artist mm -hmm. point of view. So that's where I, I said people were we're missing out sometimes because they thought they had to choose between us. Right, right, right. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. You can learn something from everyone. You cannot go to university and get a degree from one book and one well, how professor. How many coaches have we hired, right? Well, like, too many. How many books? You know, yeah, we probably have hired too many. And, you, and we it is we have, to focus. and the reason why we have is because I don't even know if you guys even understand the amount of money that the two of us have probably combined right. spent probably coming up on close to a half a million dollars in the nine years that we've known you know each what other. though we've ever it's been where i do it all again and it's been worth it and, well and the thing is is that we were we're always trying to figure out ways to better serve you mm. and sometimes it'll say it's youtube so we'll go spend 15 grand and work with a youtube guy and then it will be make more offers guy and then it'll be digital video so we're constantly investing in ourselves to provide better value to you. That's yeah. that's why and it's the we best do investment it. you can make is in yourself because well, it's an infinite we, return. And we know it. So what yeah. happens is is I chose to go a route where I wanted to be able to serve more people. Yeah. I also wanted to be able to golf five days a week. Yeah. I also didn't want the headaches of running a multi million dollar yeah. business and, and the responsibilities yeah. that come along with that. Yeah. So all I did was price myself in a way that you have a little skin in the game, but it's a, it's an affordable investment. Yeah. And I do everything I can. There's a great book called Over Deliver by Brian Kurtz. And I do everything that I can to over deliver. I'm yeah. like, hey, you want to work with me? Great. Here's how you can get direct access to me. Yeah. Here's how you can get your songs critiqued by me. Here's how you can have access to everything that I've ever created. Yeah. It's all one here. And it's for one low price. And everybody was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you just did that. And I'm like, but that's cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like because when people send us notes and people reach out and someone's like, you know what? I didn't believe in myself yeah. until you showed me yeah. how simple and easy you it know, was to do this. It's interesting. My wife, because she does a lot of graphic design and stuff, and she'll talk with some of the artists. And a lot of the time she's here, she's like, you know, I was thinking of giving up, but your husband inspired me yes. or encouraged me. And sometimes that's just all we need is we need someone to believe in us. Yeah. And Les Brown always says, you know, sometimes you got to believe in someone else's belief until your you borrow kicks it in. yeah you yeah, borrow, you borrow it and and you've done a great job on that and and that's what we just want and we, even with this episode like we i hope today hearing you know rick's story and us in this interview that you were inspired like keep going guys don't get overwhelmed by this or even if you are overwhelmed lean into it because that means you're going the right way you're stretching um, make sure you get, go to this guy's website, rickbarker.com. Um, we'll also put the links to his social media, all his programs. And, uh, dude. and and once again, it's like when new technology comes along, technology creates speed. Mm. No one ever brought us anything and said, hey, here's the, try this. It's going to slow everything in your life down. Yeah. You'd be like, you know what? Screw that. It's like, here's this thing. It's called a car. <laughs> You know, Henry Ford said yeah. if he would have asked them what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Fast horses right? But it's yeah. like when when someone yeah. says, hey, we have the ability to text yeah. now. That means I don't have to Dude. go to find change, go to a pay phone, hit the beeper where it will only say like, pager. hello. Yeah. yeah, the pagers. Technology is just, it just, everything's just, about speed. Yeah, It's what you do with the technology, mm. but don't fight it. Yeah. You know, microwave ovens were a good thing. Yeah. And it still are a good thing. Yeah. They're, they're and air fryers well, are now air that fryers air fryer came they're, they're healthier. Yeah. They're healthier. So that's what happens faster yeah. and healthier. Yeah. You know, so as this new technology comes along, yeah. don't worry about being replaced. If you mm. think, am I going to be replaced? The answer is yes, because you've already put that thought in your head. Am I going to be replaced? Is my music any good? 
No, it's not. If you have to ask that question, it's not any good. <laughs> can I have success? Can it get better? Yes. Can I get have success in this business? Yes. What's your definition of success? You know, and, it's like just managing those there, expectations is huge. Yeah. Surround yourself with people that just don't always tell you how great you are, mm. but also that's going to say, you know, mm. this is what the problem is, but here's how to fix it. You know, I, I pride myself in being a solutions well, telling the person. truth, like kicking their butts. Like I like being told off personally. And <laughs> I like it when someone tells me there's something wrong, whether that's with the song, because that means I can but, get better. But opinions are 100% correct. Yeah, you got to be careful who's giving you the opinions. Correct. That's, that's, that's the difference. Because oh, yeah. if it's your aunts and your uncles and your friends yeah. who are never going to give you honest feedback. I mean, I've got a lady right now Dude. that Dude. I have to send her her money back because you know, she's, she wanted a half hour of my time to help her find her audience. Yeah. And I listened to her stuff and I'm like, I don't know that there's an audience for this, for her. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. and I don't need her. There's a list of producers and songs. It has nothing to do. Here's a vocal coach. Oh, right. It's right. got to start there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, she's yeah. thinking that for 150 bucks, I can magically solve all her yeah. problems in a half yeah. hour. And I think she's going to have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. And I'm like, why don't you take that 150 bucks and go work with a vocal coach? Because right now you're super pitchy yeah. and you are competing with the world. It's another yeah. thing I need you to understand. You're not competing with every independent artist out there. Drake, Weekend, they all want the same playlist spots you want. Yeah. You're competing with the world. Yeah. We have to think about that. Yeah, that's good. Dude, We're thank out. you so yeah. much, man. Freaking killing yeah. it. My Guys, pleasure. hit all those links below. Hit this guy up. You won't regret it. And uh, we'll, we'll have to do this again. And if you watched this far... I'm going to give something for somebody who watched this far. Oh, I want you to DM me on Instagram. Just go to Instagram at Rick Barker music, message me the word, Chris, just Chris. If you want to get real creative, C H R I S C H R I S message me the word, Chris, cause you are I'll all send, in and I will send you something special. Cause oh. if you sat here for the whole entire time, you're somebody that I want to put the right weapons in your hands to be able to succeed. So message me on Instagram. You just message the word Chris. I'll know who it's from. There you go. And I'll get you hooked up. Dude, that's legit. And Appreciate now I'm going to go automate that.